Fox in Norman, Oklahoma, as we say welcome to Fox College Football, powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Number one home field advantage in college football over the last two decades has been right here at Memorial Stadium. Oklahoma and Iowa State ready to go. Oklahoma under Lincoln Riley, 16-1 and one in this stadium. Of course, the long blemish the last time Iowa State came to town. Good as it gets, off we go from Norman. Returnable for Brown. Oklahoma to begin at the 27 yard line. Of course, Baker Mayfield wins the Heisman in 2017. Kyler Murray wins it in 2018. Well, here in 2019, Jalen Hurts making quite a case to make it three in a row. He's the Big 12's second leading rusher. He's the nation's most efficient passer. Those 34 touchdowns lead college football, and as Brock mentioned off of the top, has already become a big-time leader for this program. He was elected a team captain right after transferring in from Alabama. Usually a lead-by-example guy, but becoming more and more vocal here in his first and only season in Norman. He will hand it off to Kennedy Brooks, who runs for a first down in the first play of the day for Oklahoma. And I think this offensive line is going to be poised for a breakout game tonight. Creed Humphrey right in the middle, been banged up. Bunch of the boys were banged up. The bye week came at a good time for them. They want to emphasize that run, and he's a good center. And on that perimeter, well, it's athleticism and explosiveness all over the place, highlighted by the 11 touchdowns of C.D. Lamb. Places him third in the country in that category. Back-to-back -back runs for Kennedy Brooks, which puts him already within one. The number of carries that he had in the loss against Kansas State. Here's the Iowa State defense. Yeah, Ray Lima right in the middle is a two-time captain as a junior college transfer. He's got a tough duty to try to stand his ground. Marcel Spears is the leading tackler, a three-year starter. Tremendous sideline to sideline. Keep an eye on Anthony Johnson. They love to use him. Five tackles for loss on the season. Three plays, three Kennedy Brooks runs, and he matches his total from the Kansas State game. That was one of the big questions around here. Why? Why were there just six carries for the running backs, and will there be more moving forward? Uh, I think they've answered that question. Uh, this script, pretty clear and not surprising at all. A light box Lincoln Riley faces. Not a lot of bodies in there for the Cyclones. They try to limit the big play down the field. Well, that means the numbers are favorable, and you want to run right at them. First pass play, Hurts lets it go right before he's hit. In coverage, Lamb goes up and gets it. Touchdown, Oklahoma. <laughs> 48 yards to C.D. Lamb, and the Sooners waste no time getting on the board. Joe, this defense is not built necessarily to stop the run between the tackles, but it's supposed to be built to stop this. Middle linebackers running behind. Those are two deep safeties. You're thrown into triple coverage, but that shows the kind of confidence Jalen has in C.D. Lamb. Just give your stars a chance to make you look good, even in triple coverage. Top offense in the country, 49 points per game, and they've done it with big play after big play. Against Kansas State, they threw it short, and Lamb turned it into a big play himself. Here he goes up and gets it, beating triple coverage, and the Sooners in front early. Dimensional, no good. So we get our first look at Iowa State's offense the plays but he will give the Sooners an opportunity with the ball at times couple of tight ends in the game to begin their strength very deep at that position and the true freshman Brees Hall one of the top recruits the program has ever had has really gotten it going lately but he settles for one here behind this offensive line that is probably the most improved group in the Matt Campbell era yes in senior laden four seniors led really by Julian Good Jones the left tackle he's played right tackle center bounced out to left and having a tremendous year and Brees Hall has been a revelation been a dynamic playmaker is a true freshman exactly what they need to mix in with their pass his explosive run Empty set for Purdy. Hall motions across the formation. Purdy looking to throw for the first time. It's up for grabs and incomplete. Well, a couple of things that we've seen all season. First of all, Brock Purdy put it into a dangerous spot. And second of all, Oklahoma having a takeaway that didn't happen. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they've only got six all year. have not had one of these since late September. It's right into the chest plate of Parnell Motley, the senior corner. Purdy will do that.
Yeah, he will take chances down the field. And for Oklahoma, and you know for defensive coordinator Alex Grinch, those are the kind of takeaways you've got to find. Third down nine. Purdy out of a clean pocket throws. Incomplete. I was looking for his tight end, Charlie Coulter. Couldn't hang on. And for the seventh time in nine games this season, Oklahoma delivers a three and out in the first possession. And this is a nickel back here, Radley Hiles. He's come under a little bit of fire, but he does a good job playing the ball. And you see the hand get in there. That's the matchup they want. That's 6-6 six, six on 5-10. That is the go-to receiver in third downs. But immediately, Oklahoma doing something they didn't do two weeks ago, and that is win on the most important money down. Freshman punter Joe Rivera. C.D. Lamb waiting back. Not a good one. Not a good one at all. And for Iowa State, this game couldn't have started much worse. Four-play touchdown drive for Oklahoma, three and out, and then a punt of just 27 yards, and here comes Jalen Hurts and the OU offense again. Oklahoma coming off that 48-41 loss at Kansas State and trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses. This is unbelievable. They've not lost back-to-back -back regular season games since 1999. That was Bob Stoops' first season. The next longest streak, having not lost back-to-back -back games, Alabama, that goes back to 2008. That's ridiculous. And it was nice to see Coach Stoops in the yeah. booth here before kickoff. Very that's, relaxed. That's a man who is living his best life right now, isn't it? Charleston Rambo in motion. Straight ahead they come with Kennedy Brooks. Now already more carries than he had against Kansas State. Getting it done a little bit differently so far in this game for an offense averaging nine and a half yards per play, which would break their record that they set last season in college football with eight and a half. You can't even do that in high school. I mean, that's just ludicrous. And one of the things we talked with Lincoln about is everybody getting enough touches, right? These running backs have not gotten this number of carries over the course of the season. They've been so doggone explosive. Fake to Brooks. Hurts has all day to scan the field. Good coverage downfield, though. Dance around. He'll run into some space before Mike Rose ultimately gets there. And it'll be third down. And that's what the scheme is supposed to do. That's what the touchdown pass was supposed to do, is take away those explosive plays down the field and make Jalen Hurts create a little bit, something he's very comfortable doing. But that's supposed to be the chess match. And a much better job on the back end for Matt Campbell, Cyclones that time. Top three defense in the Big 12, three consecutive years. With a three-down scheme a lot of times, a lot of times dropping eight into coverage. They'll do so here on third and short. And they're able to find a window to the H-back Jeremiah Hall for an Oklahoma first down. Now, but Oklahoma knows how to attack this as well, and they love to run people into those zones. Watch, watch the first route really clear out that zone. Orion Vance falls on his tush. As you see the tight end, Lee Morris, clear that out, and then you throw it right underneath. Defense coordinator John Haycock in his 37th year as a coach. He's got a tough one tonight because to me, Jalen Hurts' skill set is built exactly to take apart this kind of scheme. We're talking about the nation's most efficient passer. Hands it off here to Brooks. Stiff arms a man. Goes up the sideline, close to another first down. Braxton Lewis, the tackle. And a really nice job by the perimeter. And the one thing I appreciate and why these stats are so silly is it's buy-in from everybody. It takes receivers blocking on the outside. It's not just being selfish, I want my touches. It's everybody understanding you will get yours, but that means blocking out on the perimeter. And this receiving crew is good at blockers as anybody in college football. First down and 10 from the 27. Hurts will tuck it and run. He gets a block this time from Brooks. And crumbles to the 20 on a gain of seven. Eight yards per carry, 100 yards per game. Only Chuba Hubbard is better in the Big 12. Not just quarterbacks, we're talking any player. He's the number two rusher. And case in point right there is Kennedy Brooks leading the way. You will get your carries, you will get your touches, but everybody has got to buy in on every single play and then let the athleticism of CeeDee Lamb and Jalen Hurts and everybody express themselves. Carried it a season high 19 times in the loss at Kansas State. Uh, the loss was not his fault. 395 yards through the air with a touchdown. And 
Bunch on the ground as well. Take advantage of the underneath coverage here. C.D. Lamb carving through the defense to make it first and goal. So put him as the number one receiver in trips and let him run right down the field. Or, you know what, just run to the two-yard little hitch route. And then make one, two, three, four Cyclones miss. My Blitnikoff award winner, that guy is something else. Touchdown in the first drive, long reception here, makes it first and goal from the A. They bring him in motion. Hurts takes it straight up the middle for the touchdown. And the Sooners making it look easy early on tonight. Everybody contributes. That may mean taking a shot if you're C.D. Lamb, but you're going to be involved in this run game, and you're going to take that in. Zach Peterson out of the play. A nice job. You don't have to get perfect blocks. Just simply get your hands or a shoulder pad on a cyclone and let Jalen Hurts go north and south and do the damage he's done all season long. He is so strong, so tough as a runner. He plows his way in here. 11 plays, 14 points for Oklahoma over the first five and a half minutes of this one. coordinator John Haycock said to us and that is this Oklahoma group puts you in constant conflict what am I doing here look at the two seniors watch both of these guys right here do I react is this a perimeter play or do I take one misstep and now I'm gone a constant state of conflict run pass options inside run outside run and number one gets it all going with his ability and his love to pound the football. An early 14-0 hole as Johnny Lang returns this one to the 28. And that's where I was here to begin after this game break. Mike Hill. Seems like it. Iowa State went three and out on its first drive to begin this one from the 28-yard line. Purdy quickly gets it outside to Deshante Jones, who's run down by Pat Fields, part of this Oklahoma defense, looking for a bounce-back game after, like, Bruce touchdown, giving up 48 against Kansas State. Yeah, that was the aberration of this season. Neville Gallimore right in the middle. He is as, as athletic as anybody. So is, well, the guy they call K-9, Kenneth Murray, one of the semifinalists for the Buckus Award. He is the tone setter. And on the back end, especially, finding a way to take the ball away. Motley had one. Right off of his chest earlier, that is the charge of that secondary B ball hops. Something you see a lot of from Iowa State. Three tight ends on the field, a lot of pre-snap movement. All leads to a brief Hall run. He's hit before he gets to the line of scrimmage, able to turn it into a short gain, and it's third down. You know, you're talking about Oklahoma trying to find some takeaways. Four consecutive games without one. Six total this season. That's one thing for, for any team that's bad, but especially when you're talking about it being at the top of the list of priorities in Alec Grinch's system. And especially their style. I mean, they are a group that loves to run and pursue, that loves to slant and stunt. Just two fumbles created the entire season. That is hard to fathom. Third down three for the Cyclones. Oklahoma's showing pressure. Purdy throws high and incomplete off of the hands of Jones, and it's fourth down with the coverage from Delarian Turner Yell. Well, you've seen two third downs and a concentrated effort here to not just play coverage, something they did way too much of against Kansas State. They've been tremendous on third on third down going into that Wildcats game. And then to me, they just played coverage. They just covered grass. They didn't attack the ball. Turner Yale gets it done that time. The previous third down, it was Radley Hiles. Those are winning your one-on-one -on -one situations. Well, you talk about Clemson looking like a team upset that it was left out of the top four in the initial rankings. Oklahoma so far looks like a team that's upset they got a loss. Really good over the first part of this game for the Sooners. Here's Lamb. Already gotten it done through the air. And on a return, takes it to the 40. The carried it just six times. They've already doubled that. And the first touch here. Bouncing outside for Ramondre Stevenson. He didn't even have a carry against Kansas State and only has 10 of them over the last three games total. Oh, that was a really good job by the left side of the line. Eric Swenson in particular mowing down. If you're going to play three down and there's going to be just five Cyclones in the box and it's incumbent on those big five guys up front to not only win those battles, but wash them down as they're doing here in the first quarter. Play action.
action. Hertz throws incomplete, looking for Charleston Rambo, and we bring in Bruce Feldman. Hey, Joe, Oklahoma receivers coach Dennis Simmons has produced more than his share of, like, standout receivers. When he was at Texas Tech, he had Michael Crabtree, and here he's at Hollywood Brown and D.D. Westbrook, but he told me that C.D. Lamb is different than anyone he's ever coached. He said he is the best he's had getting off the line with his releases. He's the best downfield blocker, and he's the best after the catch. He said he's really special, and he said it's because he works so hard at his craft. Junior out of Richmond, Texas. One of the all-time leading receivers here in just two-plus seasons. That's the first catch for their second leading receiver, Charleston Rambo. who goes for five, and it's third down. And it's usually what the great ones at that position do. They don't just show up on Saturdays. They love to get out and work. So over the years of doing this and being on the college football trail, you hear that about the very best, especially wide receivers. Do they love to practice? Do they want to take scout team reps? Do they always work their craft? And CD checks every one of those boxes. It feels really early to say this is a big play for Iowa State's defense, but it sure does seem like that. Two quick scores for Oklahoma. Now third and five. They get rid of it quickly, and that was an opportunity for a pick six for Greg Eisworth. They'll settle for forcing the punt, but it was good night had he gotten his hands on that. Yeah, now this is a veteran, and you can see it. He knows that he really baits Jalen here into this throw. He plays the inside slant. He passes it off, and that's the play you have to make. If you're Matt Campbell, you're out on the road, you get Jalen. You don't fool him very often, especially a senior with as much experience as Hurts has under his belt. But the captain, the all-league performer, does everything right but finish. Hardly played over the last three games as he's dealt with a shoulder injury. Coming after this punt. Able to get rid of it and a fair catch at the 12-yard line after a 33-yard punt. Take advantage. Back-to-back three-and-outs to begin for Iowa State. They've got a wide-open hall swinging out of the backfield here for their first first down of the game to the 31. Not just showing what he can do on the ground, but he's been really good out of the backfield catching the ball as his role has increased the last three games. And this is a bust. Anytime you've got two defenders covering one guy and voiding space, that's a miscommunication, and the Cyclones take advantage. And that was a completion Brock desperately needed. They needed that third down stop. Ball start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's on the right tackle, Bryce Meeker. You get on the road in these situations, and just as a quarterback, you want to find completions. Doesn't matter if you're a freshman, if you're a senior like Jalen, and just feeling, you know, it's kind of like, you know, getting that first out in baseball, right? You just, that first strike you throw, you just get yourself into rhythm. A big third down stop from Campbell's crew defensively, and finally a completion for Purdy. Paul stops and finds a wall at the line of scrimmage. Ronnie Perkins was there first. And Neville Gallimore ate up about four Cyclones right in the middle. Big dude, huh? 6'2", 300. Neville Gallimore, 90 for the Sooners. And a perfect fit in this scheme. And they just want him to be active. No more just sitting in two gap and read and react. A guy that runs 4.75, a guy that bench presses 450, 500 pounds. Just one of those really uniquely gifted guys that creates a lot of chaos between the guards. Dunked the basketball when he was 13. We're talking about a 6'2", 300-pound D-lineman. Purdy looked comfortable this time and hit the crossing transfer to Michael Petway. Came over from Arkansas, first and only season at Iowa State, and he's got his first catch tonight for 23. Yeah, and once again, you get this much green grass, you're not communicating defensively. The Cyclones love to run shallow crosses. The third down, Turner Yale knocks it away. That time, nobody runs with the shallow cross. Those are two pretty easy completions for this crew. The crew, by the way, that didn't get blown out. Been three years since they've been beaten by more than 14 points, so not surprised to see them respond to some early adversity. There are only three programs in the country that can say that, that they've not been beaten by more than two touchdowns over the last three years. These are two of them. The other one is Washington. First and ten, here's Hall. Hall spins his way close to a first down. It's thrown down by Leron Stokes. He does have enough for another Cyclone first down. And I know it's the jersey number, but he just reminds me of Curtis Martin. Mm. And obviously Curtis, a Hall of Famer, so Kerr well before the horse here. But just as far as his movements, he glides. A true freshman that makes it look pretty easy. 
Here's the fastest receiver Iowa State's got, and Tariq Milton who can show off that speed. Down the sideline, touchdown. Speed. Extra point is good. Trey Brown with a chance to return this one. Back to the 25. Time for another game break. Here's Mike Hill. We need to be the team that throws that haymaker, as you put it. They're trying to put the pedal down after that haymaker better than they did in Manhattan. Hurts off play action. Almost gets picked. Instead, it's CeeDee Lamb. That is the third missed opportunity for an Iowa State DB. This one belonged to Lawrence White. Yeah, it's been every one of them. It was Bickham on the early touchdown. It was Eisworth, and this time Lawrence White is in the right spot. I mean, you play these coverages to try to get your guys in a situation where you can make that play, and those are the plays the Wildcats made two weeks ago. They had the pick six. And, yep, if you're going to beat an opponent like this in their building, those are the plays that you have simply got to make. Kennedy Brooks trying to bump to the outside. Can't this time. Greg Eisworth, who had one of those missed opportunities, potential pick six, doesn't miss this one. Drops him for a loss of five. Yeah, and you see that wrap on the right shoulder. He is playing banged up. Limited practice, limited in a bunch of games this year. It's going to be something that will bother him all season long. Probably something they'll have to take care of after the season. But John Haycock knows that when that guy is on the field, it's a different group. He just settles everyone down and makes everybody around him better not too often you see a guy transfer in from a junior college first team all conferences first year team captain unanimous choice from his teammates the next year second and long hurts pulls gets a block from Rambo and he gets stopped by Lawrence White that's interesting now a couple runs here following a couple near misses and Lincoln Riley is a really good play caller on the sidelines I think he's one of the best in college football but he's watching Jalen right now three different occasions play with fire not getting burned, but very easily could have three interceptions, just not seeing the entirety of that coverage on the back end for Iowa State. Cyclones have him in third and long here, third down nine. They empty it out. Lambs the motion man. Here comes pressure. Hurts tucks it down. Makes a man miss, gets a first down. Jalen Hurts shifting his way for first down yardage, but there is a flag down. And it looks like it may be on Oklahoma. You watch that move how many different times, and you think eventually these defenders are not going to fall for that. Oh. Offense number 56. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. It's Creed Humphrey, the center. Yeah, he just tackles Ray Lima, the nose tackle, the two time captain. Those are going to be two big old grizzly bears that are going to be fun to watch right here in the middle of the action. A little stunt right into Creed, and it's the hands outside, and it's this two point takedown right here that I think ultimately draws the penalty after Jalen shakes Lawrence White out of his shoes. That's about a 20 yard loss net. And so third down 16, Hurts throws, finds Lee Morris, who is close to the first down. He's got it. And so far, Oklahoma making all the plays that Iowa State is. Yeah, and this is just simply too much cushion. You want to keep everything in front of you, but you can't drop back 15 yards, not against the speed. And even the wide tight end has a tremendous amount of speed. As you see Morris move the chains and really take advantage of very, very soft cover. After further review, the ruling on the field stands first down. Dude, Blandino looks fresh, though, huh? Amazing, right? <laughs> He's had a lot of conversation throughout the day, and ultimately I think that's the right call. Much more difficult calls over the course of what was just an awesome day to sit and watch college football. I know it was late, and for both of these teams, they're itching to play. How about that Baylor TCU game? What a day. Huh? Amazing catch to Valence Hunt. Looked like the game was over. Eventually it was. And it was the same outcome it would have been had he not caught it. But still, incredible drama in that game in Fort Worth on FS1. First down from the 44. Hurts looking to run. Now drops back and he'll throw. He's got a first down to A.D. Miller, who's got his first catch since the second game of the season. Remember that conflict I talked about? Watch 44, the middle linebacker here. It's a run, it's a pass. Jalen Nope falls back, and then he's going to throw that ball right off my ear. What do you do? 
you catch the ball when it's thrown to you three different times and you get off the field on third and 16. Yeah. That's what you do. You don't wait for those moments on early downs. Those are the situations you've got to take advantage of. Hurts behind Brooks. Also got a block from Trajan Bridges. And an easy run of eight yards. Last time Iowa State gave up 14 or more points in the first quarter. Actually wound up okay. It's the last time they came here. Came from behind as a 31-point dog to win 38-31. It was the biggest win on the road in Iowa State history. His third-ranked Oklahoma that day, Baker Mayfield, went on to win the Heisman that season. Brooks takes a cut for a first down. Yeah, this is a first quarter that's just not overly complicated, right? I mean, for Iowa State, they are very clear in their messaging of how they need to win games, and that's take the ball away and not give it away. Right? That is put teams in long yardage situations and then go up and tackle and make the plays. There have been a number of them for a crew defensively that's veteran laden, that knows how to play, knows their style. There should have been a number of plays that are going to be real frustrated when they watch the tape on Monday. Hertz pulls it at the last moment. Looked like he was going to let it go. Instead, he'll run inside the 10, bringing this first quarter to a close. You ready to begin this second quarter? What stands out to you so far? How about 9.2 yards per play being below the season average for Oklahoma? Killing their average. 9.2 a play. On pace for 880. Pretty, pretty good. Threatening again. Two touchdowns on two drives. They've got a second and four here from the six. It's Hurts. Not much room this time. And third down coming up. That was a really nice play by Jamal Johnson, the nose tackle. He and Ray Lima, two seniors that rotate in and out. And for this defense, Peterson, Johnson, Lima, those guys have got to be able to do what Johnson just did, and that is get off blocks. Facing pressure, lofting to the end zone, jump ball, and a touchdown. Trajan Bridges, the true freshman who hadn't had a catch over the last three games, gets one here for a score. And yeah, what did Lincoln Riley tell us yesterday? He said, man, I feel like our three freshmen are just poised for some real success here down the stretch. Guys that have worked really hard, this is just your one-on-one. -on -one. I'd have talked about on the other side, creating those matchups and those situations that you like. And that's your big athletic freshman wide receiver on Braxton Lewis with a whole bunch of field to work with. And Jalen, just give him a jump ball. An alley-oop and let him go dunk and finish. A part of the reason Bridges hadn't done anything in terms of receptions the last few games is that they've toyed with him on defense, playing him at DB some. Lincoln Riley said for now that experiment is over and it's back to full-time receiver. One of the three five-star receiver recruits who are talking about part of this freshman class. He's got a touchdown to make it 21-7. Three drives, three scores for number nine. Programs have met 83 times. Oklahoma has won 75 of them. That's the best winning percentage of any FBS program against an opponent. Mm. When you get your chances, Joe, you've got to take advantage. And unfortunately, Iowa State just has not done that here. 38-31 win here in Norman two years ago. Oklahoma went to Ames last season and beat them 37-27. Here comes Kane Nwangu. And Nwangu, who's a track star in high school, shows off some of that speed, bounces to the sideline and those sliders that you've got to do damage with. But you followed him back. Right? Yes. You step yes. out of the box, shake your head. How did I miss it? The drive begins at the 32. Here comes Brees Hall. Good patient running to let it develop. Then he turns the corner and shows off the myriad of skills that he's got. 
Saw some of the patience, some of the vision, and then the burst for a gain of 16. Big time recruit. He had multiple opportunities. The Michigans of the world came calling, but this was his first offer. He stayed loyal to it. I think the development of others around him, in particular Kareem Hunt, David Montgomery in this system, and the true freshman's made it look easy. He's got tremendous vision, and he loved the acceleration through contact as well. Here comes the trick play. Deshante Jones wanted to let it go. Now, well, incomplete. Delaria and Turner yell at a chance at it. As Jones, the high school quarterback, who was two for two in his Iowa State career, just tossed that one up and said a prayer. Yeah, that, that's a no-no. <laughs> but it's hard to tell receivers who've worked on that all week. It nearly actually comes down. It's my shot, right? Through it's Turner Yell into Purdy's hands. But you work on that all week. And while you can instruct the receiver to say, hey, listen, just because we call it doesn't mean you've got to throw it. But once again, Turner Yell on the back end. That Sooner defense just is not able to find a takeaway. Second and ten, Johnny Lang in the game at running back. Here's a wide open LaMichael Petway. His second catch of the day. It's another big one. 21 yards to the Oklahoma 30. Well, this one, the true freshman just falls flat on his face. Jaden Davis is charged. You can see the man-to-man -man coverage here. Right? They love these shallow crosses. Jaden missed the tackle on the touchdown earlier, and that's an advantage Iowa State. That's a 6'2", 235-pound Arkansas transfer. Not a perfect throw from Purdy. That way makes him look good. But the true freshman, Davis, falls. Iowa State takes advantage. Quickly send Breeze Hall back into the game after one playoff. Purdy with a run. It's Hall leading the way. Trying to bounce outside. There's a flag down likely for a hold as Pat Fields brings Purdy down. I like that call. I like it more around the 10-yard line. He's a good runner. He is. And you know, I think a block in the back here is going to be a significant mm. penalty the other way. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 66. It's a 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. And the right guard, Josh Kniffel. And he's pulling around. Replay first down. Replay. And the whole timing of that play was just off. As you see, the captain, Kniffel, the right guard, he pulls around and he just pushes Motley right in the back. There was nowhere for Purdy to run. That play was designed to go up inside. Oklahoma outnumbers it, outleverages it. And a play to me that's fit better maybe down into the red zone goes the wrong way for Iowa State. Makes it first and 20 all the way back at the 40. Another flag. Number 63, five-yard penalty. Five well, Iowa State, one of the least penalized teams in the country, back-to-back -back here and already one shy of their game average. They've got three penalties here in the first half. And that was the center who flinches because I think he could feel big Neville Gallimore just simply breathing on him. You don't blame him. Like a ball. Noise drops some weight, but still, that is an intimidating fella on the inside for Oklahoma. Uh, first down in a quarter of the field, Hall gets nothing. Pulled down by Deshaun White. I remember playing the Nebraska national title team, Grant Wistrom, Rucker, Christian Peter, them dudes, getting under center and just hearing them breathe. Oh. I mean, they were like, they were, they were like Brahma Bulls just getting ready to go. And when Oklahoma's going, and when they were successful the first six, seven weeks of this season, it was those big boys up front. Stokes and Gallimore and Murray just flying to the football. Those guys had the, uh, they had the short jerseys, right, showing off the abs, neck rolls. Oh, yeah. Second down, 25. Lofting for Kohler, who can't hang on. It would have been a tough catch, but it's one that more often than not he's made this season. A perfect job on the back end of this. All right, we asked Alex Grinch, when you got mismatches physically, what's important? He said to win early in the down, meaning to get your body right on him. But if you don't, then you have to separate that big receiver from the ball. And Motley does it textbook, gets his head out of the way, puts the shoulder right into where Kohler's going to try to make that reception. That's well done by the senior. 
And all the penalties set him back. And now third down and 25. Only a few seconds to snap it. There's a flag down as Purdy rolls and now runs. Sliding down at the 33. There's an injured Iowa State lineman. It's fourth and 14. You're going for it? Uh, kind of that in-between range. There they are. Looks sending the offense back out there. The previous spot, and we'll replay third Wonder down. about a quick kick in this situation, too. Actually, I think just decided that they're going to accept the penalty, huh. and so they will replay third down, which will now be third and 30. Well, this is where I've got to I got to take a shot to one of my big guys. This crew doesn't take the ball away on the back end. They've had a, a couple of them already bounce off their hands. Third and thirty. If I'm Brock Purdy, I got to find my one on one. I like down the field and do what Jalen's done. Give my guys an opportunity to make me look good. And he's got some big targets out there. He's got the six six Sean Shaw. He's got the six six Charlie Kohler. He's got the six three to Michael Petway. Flushed off his spot, trying to keep it alive long enough to find something downfield, but can't get away from Ronnie Perkins. Only a gain of three, and it's fourth down. And you just can't be one-dimensional against this D-line. That is just not a favorable situation. Iowa State, four seniors up front. They play really hard, but you're just playing to the athleticism of Perkins and Gallimore and these guys when they know there's no run threat in those situations. You play to their strengths. And now there's an injured sooner. It's Kenneth Mann. And not done so, and that's down 14. A rugby style from Rivera bounces to a charging lamb. Makes the first couple miss and then pays the price. Marcel Spears on special teams gets the tackle. I asked the coach in another part of college football who's much older. He goes, yeah, we did that way back then. That's everything. That's our philosophy. Jalen Hurts finding room here on first down. Mount Union 13 national titles over the last 27 years. And they are 8-0 this season. Ranked number one in the country. And I love what Alex Kirk said. He put, How many safeties were there? There were seven walk-on safeties. There were seven other safeties. One of 14. Right when he stepped onto the, the field there, you are in that program a big reason. A, I think they had so much success, and then B, that these guys are built for future success. And uh, they actually moved to 9-0 today. 51-3 win. Clinch another conference title. Hurts retreating. Dump it off for Lamb. One-on-one -on -one with Detron Young. Able to make him miss. And he's right at the first down marker. See, Oklahoma buys into it, to Bruce's point, players, formations, plays. They just happen to recruit, like, all four- and five-star players. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and then it is, well, do we really need that many formations? Actually, let's just create space for them and do it really quickly and let that athleticism flourish. Spotted him a little bit short, third and less than one. Sherman and Hall come in. He's got a first down. Yeah, and that's just the X factor that is so hard from a number standpoint. Matt Campbell's excellent. His D coordinator, John Haycock, is awesome. And on the chalkboard, you can watch all the X's and O's. And it makes sense. And you could say, okay, this number and this end, you know, cancels out this player. But then all of a sudden, well, number one's left. And then what do you do? When that guy runs like a 225-pound, as physical as any tailback in America, it just really blows those numbers up. Empty set for him here. Bringing pressure with Mike Rose, who couldn't get there in time. It's Lamb hitting the accelerator, cutting it against the green, hurtling into the clear. There goes C.D. Lamb. He gets a block. He gets inside the five. He is, I believe, in. Can you believe it? He's in. Touchdown. I've seen it before. Zone coverage here. CeeDee Lamb sits down. We saw this earlier, and this is where you're just different, man. One, two, cut across the grain. Three, four. 
He did it against K-State a week ago. He's done it against just about everybody. And then he, too, got the grown man strength to go finish. Wow. You're welcome, Jalen. 63 yards. That sure did look similar, you're right, to uh, Kansas State. And Campbell jabbing himself with that pin right in the hip. Oh <laughs> like, gosh. this is like, not like supposed to happen. Right? You've got to cover it up. There's people there to tackle. And they just simply athletically can't match up. Burkett for the extra point. Oklahoma grows the lead to 28-7 as C.D. Lamb gets his seventh touchdown this season of more than 40 yards, and this one was all him taking the short throw, cutting it across the field, giving everybody here at Memorial Stadium a good look at it. 28-7 Sooners. Uh, C.D. Lamb is at least a candidate to go to New York and get some talk. It's a fair catch. Drive would begin. For Oklahoma is 45, in case you're wondering. Ryan Broyles holds that. It's pretty evading the rush for Bonito. Thought about letting it go. Instead, he'll run for five. And this is really important right now that you just take some time. Your defense is gassed. Your defense is watch sprinters blow by them. You now have to possess the football if you're Iowa State. You will get the ball to begin the second half. You cannot become just one-dimensional and think you're going to wind up and throw it all the way back into this game. You've got to continue to try to find balance and give your defensive group an opportunity to gather themselves. Yeah, and glass half full, like you said, getting the ball back in the second half. You look at it and say, we get a long touchdown drive here. Score to open the second half, and you're right back in it. There's not a lot of room for air, though. Here's Brees Hall spinning his way free. Brees Hall, what a run. First down crossing the 45. For a guy that Oklahoma looked at, didn't heavily recruit, though, he decides to go to Iowa State at a Wichita, Kansas, one of the top recruits in program history, but they say was just a little bit overwhelmed with everything that comes with being a first-year college student, not even just a first-year college football player, as he got acclimated, started to practice better, really increased his role a few games ago. Johnny Lang replaces him, really just gets him a breath. On first down from the 46, Lang off the right side. Lang hits the clear, and he's got a first down. The guy who carried it just twice the last game and has seen his role diminish as Hall has taken off. Goes for 24. Yeah, and he gives Turner Yell a little Jalen Hurts shimmy right here. Watch the little move, a one-on-one -on -one situation. See him. That's against pretty good tackling. Take your time. Lang stays in there. Ted and Dylan Saner comes into the backfield as an extra blocker for Purdy. Got tripped up by Turner Yell. But a nice first down gain for Purdy. Exactly what the doctor ordered here. Three consecutive runs by Iowa State. Late flag here. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 10, 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot, automatic, first down. That's safety, Pat Fields. Penalties have been an issue for Lincoln Riley's team this season. Most penalized team in the conference. 12 penalties at Kansas State a couple weeks ago. It's only their second one today, but it moves the ball inside the 15. Lang slipped his way free. There's a flag down as he goes into the end zone for the touchdown, but a flag back around the line of scrimmage. I think that's going to be a hold, holding Kenneth Murray, not allowing him to get free and make a play. Yard from the previous spot. Replay first down. 
Yeah, watch Kenneth Murray here, the leading tackler for the Sooners, and you're just going to see his jersey get tugged amidst the chaos. And that's what those umpires are trained to do. This is one of my favorite officiating crews in the conference. And that's the tells that they look for. They see the jersey tugged. You don't allow Murray to go do what he does best, go finish. You're going, fortunately for Iowa State, going to wipe six points off the board. There have been some big penalties on the Cyclones here in the first half. This one wipes away the touchdown, moves it all the way back to the 23. Hall's back in the game, taking the fake against pressure. Wide open, man, that's a touchdown. You're going to pull your hair out. Here's the vertical, but this is the problem. There's a corner blitz, and there's nobody to cover. I mean, that is just an absolute bust once again. We have seen these coverage voids for Oklahoma, a lack of communication. You saw it early. Safety's trying to communicate to everybody whom to cover. That is not that exotic, but a corner blitz at the wrong time. Miscommunication and the Cyclones, a critical seven. Sometimes those are the hard ones to catch, right? You got time to think about it. Read the label on the ball. Trey Brown. Good. Cover John special teams this time. And the scrimmage as well. Sinners begin this drive with Hurts in trouble. And set back at the six by Marcel Spears. Oh, not seeing this a lot tonight, that initial penetration. Really good job by Ray Lima. Again, beating your block in this game. If you can defeat those situations, it's on three on five. It's hard duty for those D linemen, but if you can and you allow Spears and crew to run right behind you, you can create a rare negative play against the Sooners. Give him his forward progress, so they spotted at the 10, still a loss of seven. CD Lamb. That time it gets blown up. Heck of a job fighting to the block by the redshirt freshman Tavon Kyle, third and long. Before it, here's Bruce. Joe, right before Oklahoma took the field, Jalen Hurts kind of sensed momentum was shifting, really got in the face of some of his teammates, gave him kind of a stern talking to about, hey, we gotta, we gotta get out here, we gotta get after these guys, we gotta stay on them. I think he really felt like this momentum was starting to shift, and they had been a little sloppy, and he was trying to reel them back in. Yeah, Bruce, I think that is a guy that knows who you're playing against, too. That Iowa State's a bunch of grown men. They're a proud program. They stay on the details. And that last drive, there was no panic for them. And what a response defensively here. Sooners been able to pick it up on third and long earlier today. They hand it off here to Trey Sermon, and he gets a bunch back. Ultimately, a little, a little bit short, and he's hobbled after a gain of 14. And that's unfortunate for Trey. Second punt today for Reeves Munchau. First one went just 32 yards. A rough day at Kansas State. It's off a better one here. Tariq Milton with a fair catch. Been some coverage busts, poor communication, more base defense. Drive starts at the 41. Against just a three-man rush. Purdy will dump it off to Brees Hall. There is no room for him there. Deshaun White. There for the tackle with Nick Bonito. We talked about their win, of course, here against number three Oklahoma in 2017. It's not just been that. Remarkably, Matt Campbell's team has won three of its last four against the top ten. And yeah, when I asked him, where have you made the most growth in your program, he did not hesitate. He said, our belief, the belief that we can go into Norman and win. Because we've done it. And, and the guys know just in the culture of the program what it takes to get it done. On second down, Purdy escapes the pocket, has his eyes downfield. Murray bearing down on him. Murray missed, but Perkins didn't. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and it's third down. I thought that sense of belief really was instilled in that win here two years ago. He said, you know, you come in, you take over a program, you talk about your vision, but for that vision to become a reality that guys can trust, you got to get a win like they had here. And when you're 675 and two, or at that point, 574-2. The only way you're going to convince it is to actually get it done. On third and ten, Oklahoma showing some pressure. A tight coverage across the board for the Sooners. They bring only four, so Purdy has time and heaves it incomplete. Flag flies. Jaden Davis. Defending to Shante Jones may get called for the penalty here. Wow. And there were two big third down penalties at K-State two weeks ago. 
of this variety. A pass interference, a hold on third and 15 plus had extended those drives just too handsy. Now those third and long pickups for Kansas State, as big a story as anything. After further discussion, there is no foul on the play. Fourth down. They're going to pick this one up. Oh, and Oklahoma Matt thinking maybe this week's different. Matt Campbell does not like that at all, but I do like the conversation. This is a true freshman. Do the hands affect the route, or did Deshante just simply slip? I think fair communication there. My guess is those two officials said now, you know, Deshante slipped. Still had every opportunity to go get that ball. Ultimately didn't. But Matt Campbell, not buying any of that analysis. No. <laughs> 234 left to go in the half. Joe Rivera, been a busy guy in this first half. His fourth punt here. Darren Wilson, receiver here on special teams, unloads on Lamb. And football play finds that contact. Is there any of that debate or conversation? Yeah, I think there is. And again, I would not be shocked if they pick up this flag because you have to take all these things into consideration and say, look, is he truly targeting? Is there a launch? Or is this just a bang-bang play that happens quickly? Again, there is forcible contact. They're going to have to look at it and determine if they can confirm all elements. And that is the key. That is new this year. There's no more call stands when it comes to targeting. If the call stands, there is no targeting. Yep. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. In previous... You love the way they protect quarterbacks and all that. The lamb on the sideline to begin this drive. They bring the freshman Theo Weiss in motion and hand it off to Kennedy Brooks. Kennedy Brooks ran for more than a thousand yards last year. He's a freshman All-American. That's why it's been so much of a surprise seeing a game like two weeks ago against Kansas State where he was non-existent. Really, all the running backs invisible. And when you get down 20-some points, Part that's also a bit uncharacteristic. <laughs> all three timeouts for the Sooners. Hurts to run, makes Mike Rose miss. Stays on his feet to the 40. Let's check in with Bruce Feldman. Joe, just to follow up on Trey Sermon, he left the injury tent. He was pretty shaken up, rubbing his eyes, head down, really emotional. Walked out gingerly. They're going to further evaluate his knee back inside. All right. So heavy dose of Brooks figures see some more Mindre Stevenson as a result as this game goes on, too. First down from the 39 with a minute and a half. Iowa State bringing some pressure. It's picked up, giving Hurts time. But the coverage downfield, very good. And Andy Uwazarike winds up bringing him down. Uwazarike, thank you. Thank you. First time out of the half. 30 seconds. November game since 2014. That's 17 November wins in a row. Second and ten from the 39. Out of the timeout, Hurts looking to throw. A deep drop to let the routes develop. They'll check it down, Jeremiah Hall. Eisworth rips him down, and it's third down. And now here's the game, right? Here's like the game within the game. You do everything right right there. And you can see Eisworth, man, he is gutting it out with that shoulder. But you play soft coverage, you go up, you make that one-on-one -on -one tackle, and now you get to third and five. And if you're going to win this game, you've got to win this down in distance. Sooners three for seven on third down so far, but a couple of big pickups on third and long. This is third and five, and against a blitz, Hurts underneath, has Hall very close. Let's see where he stepped out. He's got enough. First down, Oklahoma, with a minute 11 and two timeouts. There you just see some of the maturity in what 36 starts under your belt. Don't force it. Throw it underneath the sticks for Jalen Hurts, and trust that your guys, even your big 250-pound tight end fullback, knows where to get to, and take what the defense gives you. Hurts hit in the backfield this time. They replay well defended. Jamal Johnson 
senior most significant role he's played in his career he's made a couple of nice stops in this first half. that was a nice little stunt by Iowa State that was Grinch s hunting right into that zero yard run save the two timeouts spears the free rusher hurts heaves it out of bounds as Lawrence white came in there as well and again it's third down You know, you said earlier about a third down that felt rather monumental, even for a first half third down. Knowing you're going to get the ball to begin the second half of your Iowa State and getting them exactly where you want, third and 11. Do you play coverage? Do you drop eight? Do you force the hand to Jalen Hurts, which they did on that second and 10? More than anything, you've got to be sound and you've got to tackle on this down and distance. And more often than not, if you've touched on there, that defense that'll drop seven or eight. Here they're bringing a couple of extra men, forcing Hurts off his spot. He's still able to beat him. Braden Willis, only his sixth catch of the season, a 22-yard third down conversion. And you do so many things well, right? You get the pressure, you get Jalen off his spot, but this is where he's kryptonite to your scheme. He extends the play, has eyes down the field, and makes it happen. From the 27 on the ensuing play, he's flushed again. Angles out of bounds after a gain of two. Matt and Leo hot in pursuit. Jalen is just teaching tape for any young quarterback on the ability to not only extend the play and use his legs in dynamic ways, but to extend, understand game situation and have the awareness, know where people are when you do scramble. A pretty unique asset that Lincoln Riley's really had in all three of his last quarterbacks. Speaking of assets, he has CeeDee Lamb back in the game now, but a timeout taken by Iowa State. That land to the top of the screen. He pumps one way, runs the other, gets around to Ryan Vance, and gets close to a first down with Will McDonald making the stop. He does have enough. Clock stops for the chains to move. And now Lincoln Riley's going to use Oklahoma's second timeout. This opportunity, and man, are they ever. 16 seconds. Hurts rolling to his right, lofting for the end zone. Looking for Bridges, he'll get a flag on Anthony Johnson. Bridges already a touchdown earlier today, and here, pass interference kept him perhaps from another. Remember, there's no face guarding in college football. You can get away with it, it's just whether or not you impede the receiver. Defense number 26. The foul occurred in the end zone. Ball be placed at the two-yard line. First down. So with nine seconds and one timeout, first and goal from the two. So just because in turn for the ball, that's not the penalty. It is the judgment that the contact impedes the receiver's opportunity to go get it. And I think that's justified there. I love the hand fighting. And Anthony trying to knock the ball away, but an awful lot of contact drew the penalty. Oklahoma looking for a big score here. C.D. Lamb in motion, takes the fit, hurts, waits, powers his way in for another touchdown. His fifth total in the first half. You know why he goes in that weight room after these games at times and just gets back on that squat rack or power cleans? The former competitive power lifter in high school for moments like these. That's just in the hole, a one-on-one -on -one with a banged-up Eisworth trying to tackle him with one arm. That is not going to happen. Yeah, what a big shift over the final few minutes of this first half. Iowa State had it back with their sights set on getting to within one score. But a punt and a quick strike from Oklahoma. 35-14, back in 30 seconds. Or the Big 12, the SEC, or the, you name it. A dribble out of a kickoff, fielded at the 26. With three seconds, as Oklahoma tries to move to 8-1 and one on the season. A season that started with three easy wins in non-conference play. Part of the knock on the Sooners is those three teams combined 10 and 17 this season. Started 4-0 in conference play. The only win against a ranked opponent. In fact, the only ranked opponent they've faced is Texas. And really the only challenge they had going into the Kansas State game, which Kansas State won behind Skyler Thompson, who was 
very, very good. Ran for four touchdowns, threw the ball well. Seven, they had some balance on their best drive, being willing to run the ball. Tossed it into the short side, Maurice Hall. Block in front from Charlie Kohler. Kept on going and got a first down. So Hall over 50 yards for the day. True freshman in his first game here at Norman. Yeah, nearly seven yards to carry. Doing what he's done really with this opportunity and that's running through that first contact. Done it all season. Well, that pre-snap movement from Oklahoma. Same play. Same pretty good result with a gain of eight for Hall. Bryce Meeker, the right tackle with a key block there, again along with Charlie Kohler. Yeah, it's back-to-back -back snaps now, getting out on the edge. I always love seeing the adjustment staffs make. And that's where the Wildcats two weeks ago took advantage of these Sooners getting out on the edge. And if it works, don't get away from it. I love that back-to-back -back same call. Does it make you wonder why we didn't see more of it in the first half? Well, I think those are just some of the adjustments. But more than anything, I mean, they moved the ball over yeah. 200 yards of offense. They just could not stay on the field and sustain drives. Second down and two. Three consecutive hall runs to open this second half. And he stays on his feet to the 40. Reese Hall for a gain of 17. And it's been all him to open the second half. That was right through Nick Benito, right? Just those one-on-one -on -one situations. The ultimate team game still comes down to one-on-one -on -one tackling. And Matt Campbell, this crew responding. Hall again has a seam off the right side. Inside the 25. Pat Fields finally runs him out. 19 more for Hall. Alex Grinch has got to be saying, can somebody tackle this kid? That was an awesome job there by Colin Olsen, the center, getting to Kenneth Murray. Kind of like Hurts on the other side. You don't need perfect blocks. Just simply get a body on a body. Get a piece of those second-level defenders, and you can see the explosion of Hall. He'll do the rest. How about four carries, 53 yards, and 100 for the day? Well-deserved break here for Hall as they bring Johnny Lang in. And they love the tight ends down as they get closer to the red zone. Here's Lang with a touchdown called back because of a penalty during the first half running for two. Just imagine what Hall is going to look like in a couple years. Mm. Right, that frame that is always and is already such a good runner. You know what it's going to look like. You know the development that Iowa State. I love what Matt Campbell said. He goes, we often make the error of playing guys too late rather than too early. And if you're a true freshman playing in this system, you're doing something. But that guy's going to grow into an even bigger stud. Second and eight, Purdy to throw. He delivers to the crosser, Chase Allen, one of those tight ends. Laying out to catch it. <laughs> Defended and tackled by Pat Fields, third down. A great catch. But this is down distance, 0 for 4 for Matt Campbell Cyclones in the first half. And Oklahoma, part of the reason they lost to Manhattan as well is they didn't win this down in distance. Number 12 ranked defense on third down on the season. You've got to find a way to convert. Flag down. And that just kills you. That's, That's the seventh of the game on Iowa State. A team that on the season only gets penalized four times per game on Ball average. Started. Offense, number 52. It's a five yard penalty. Third down. Uh, it was downing, but it was Good Jones next to him. I think it was really the center more than anybody else. Just about everybody else on that O line trying to fire off on third down. Self inflicted mistakes, lethal on the road. Doesn't it seem like all of those seven penalties have either killed drives or just really put him in a tough spot? No question. This one does as well. They go from third and five to third and ten. Play clock down to three. Purdy sees it. They get the snap off. Swing it outside to Hall, who stays on his feet through initial contact and gets a first down. Well, he goes on the sideline for two plays of rest. Comes back out and gets a big 12-yard reception to convert. Yeah, and that's through 250-pound defensive end, Ronnie Perkins, right there. I mean, that's Jalen Hurts-esque with that lower body strength. 
And it's through Pat Fields. I mean, the pursuit is there. The effort of the Sooners is there. But they can't make those tackles. This kid is fun to watch. First down and goal for the Cyclones. Wow. Delay game. Defense number nine. Clap simulating the start of the signal for the offensive team. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. All right. So Kenneth Murray called for uh, simulating the signal. Yeah, watch him right here. This was pretty clear and obvious. Now they'll they'll move and they'll stop, but you just can't imitate that snap count. That's a heads-up play. This is a veteran officiating crew. It didn't look like they were looking for it. Like maybe that's something Matt Campbell on the Iowa State sideline has said, have a heads up for this. A lot of times that's how it winds up getting caught. The first and goal from inside the five. Falling into the backfield. They're running with his direction on the option play. Purdy keeps it untouched. What a response. Had to have it. And they got it. They score on the first possession of the second half, and Oklahoma gets it for the first time. Trey Brown from the nine. A little bit shy of the 25. Stung more than anything the first 30 minutes. Oklahoma racked up 374 yards of offense. This is how they started the game with a heavy dose of Kennedy Brooks. Here he gets stopped by Orion Vance and Braxton Lewis. Much more action for the running backs in the first half of this one than against Kansas State. That's the 11th carry for the group. Again, after they had just six touches against K-State. 28 rushes overall. I think a statement being made coming off that bye week to get back to playing violent physical football. Hurts lofting downfield Charleston Rambo and he overshot him. Got a couple of steps on Anthony Johnson. This missed opportunity belongs to Oklahoma. Yeah, and you don't see that much from Jalen. He usually, if anything, is going to underthrow the ball to give his guys the chance when they close cushion like that and explode out of the route. The one thing you don't want to do is overthrow. And he's a hard guy to overthrow. Uh, yes, he is. A little bit more air. That is a deep throw across the field. I think the location was right. Just simply not enough air on the ball to let Rambo go get it done. There we go on the other side of that third down story. Oklahoma was six for eight in the first half. They convert nearly here with Lamb, but he can't hang on. And it's fourth down as Iowa State gets off of the field. Wow, that would have been nearly superhuman. You're going to see the route come across. This is where Hertz is at his best. Good time blitz right in the face of Jalen. And this is all about those two connecting. Right, he's covered up. But when you're throwing a CD and Jalen's throwing it, you're not covered. And that is one that Lamb usually comes down with. Tariq Milton, long touchdown reception in the first half. Back to return this punt from Reeves Munchak. Couldn't script it better for the Cyclones. Coming after this punt. Good high one from Munchak. And a fair catch from Milton. Empty set to begin this drive from the 37. Purdy hadn't had his usual day through the air. One of the top passers in the country, just 7 of 12. They'll swing it out to Hall here. Surrounded by crimson shirts, rammed out of bounds by Murray. Here's Bruce Feldman. Joe, right before Oklahoma's defense went out on the field, Alex Grinch called up every player on the defensive side of the ball. They all rallied around him, and he lit into them really good. I, he was very frustrated by the effort coming out of, the, out of the third quarter. He did not like how Brees Hall ran through tackles. He did not like how they were playing on their heels. He wants them to play with an edge, and that is something that he was bothered by last week, and clearly it's carried over to the start of the second half. And Bruce, who's known as a great motivator, Trying to get his crew going. They surround Hall here. Soft sledding. Third down and long. I think that was most evidenced by the fact that Alex Grinch had no voice when he met with Literally. us. Literally. <laughs> Nearly. But 12 days after 
that debacle in Manhattan because that was not the defense through the first seven weeks. I like what he said. He quoted Lou Holtz saying that, man, every week is different in college football. We love to say that as broadcasters, every week matters. He was saying, man, you learn about your team every week. You're constantly growing and developing, and they went to sleep two weeks ago. Just inconsistent effort. Not good enough. I was stayed 0 for 4 on third down in the first half. Converted the third down on their first drive of the second. Here on third and eight, facing pressure. Purdy gets rid of it. Hit in the air and incomplete. Pat Fields breaks up a pass intended for Charlie Colter, who they still have not been able to find tonight. Now, this was a really good job of a lot of contact from Pat Fields. If you're giving up six, seven inches and 50 pounds, boom, you got to make that contact. Right, that's it. That is textbook of what Grinch told us yesterday, that you have to win early, not just when the ball's in the air, but you got to get that big man off his route, off his timing. That's well executed in the three and out this Oklahoma defense needed. A big, big stand right there when it felt like Iowa State was starting to seize the momentum. Rivera's best punt of the night sends Lamb back inside the 10. He'll watch it bounce, and it's downed at the 2. What a job by the freshman Joe Rivera. Awesome. Well, back into their own end zone. Oklahoma goes back to work with Jalen Hurts getting tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Like Rose, the tackle, second and ten. The better job on that first three and out to begin the second half as well is just similarly getting to these guys before they get started. Right, if I talk about the coverage on the other side, and if you're giving up size and strength, then you better not let Jalen Hurts get a full head of steam on you like he often did in that first half. A much better job here to begin the second half. Keep it on the ground this time with Brooks trying to get to the edge and use his speed. He's got a first down. Stepping inside a defender, taking it to the 30 on a gain of 27. And just a couple broken angles there. You know, two Cyclones. Mike Rose is the first. The Sam linebacker, it is there. They talk about their first level of pursuit. And then there you see Eisworth once again just breaking contain. That's the difference in speed, man. It can bust those angles, and that's exactly what Brooks gets done. Oklahoma averages 10 plays of 20 or more yards per game. Get another one of them there. Here's Hurts trying to get around the edge. Now oh, cut it back and get crunched. Lost four. Marcel Spears, the first man there. Man, these guys play hard. And look at that jersey. Man, that's what Matt Campbell said to Bruce Feldman. I love my guys. And you put on the tape, and it doesn't matter. Coach Haycock as well, the defensive coordinator, longtime head coach. Back in the day, these, these guys, they play a bunch of them. But their engines never stop. Third straight year, they've been top three in the Big 12 in scoring defense. Second down, 14. Hurts retreats, delivers underneath to Charleston Rambo. First catch of the game for Rambo. He's stopped by Lawrence White on a gain of 10, and it's third and four for Oklahoma. Had its way on this down in the first half on both sides of the ball. First third down opportunity in this second half. Iowa State was able to get off of the field. Brought a little pressure on that third down earlier. Tried to force the issue just a little bit to disrupt the timing. Gonna do it again. Yeah, here they come on third and four. Hurts scrambling. Needs the 40. He's gonna get it. Jalen Hurts scrambling for seven on third and four. That time, that's the defensive end, Zach Peterson. A good little pressure. These pressures are getting home. They're affecting Jalen off his spot. But then ultimately, here's your one-on-one. -on -one. That's a 250-pound defensive end. Zach Peterson, you try to tackle Jalen Hurts high, you're going to lose that battle. So, fresh shoot of downs from the 43. They empty it out for Hurts. He'll look to throw. Scan in the field. Hoping somebody comes loose. Fires it by Basquin, second and ten. So back-to-back -back Heisman winners, also back-to-back -back first overall picks. I don't think anybody thinks Jalen Hurts is going to be the first overall pick. Big picture, though, NFL. How do you see him? Oh, yeah. Big oh, time. Uh, yes. Okay. 
Yeah, as productive as you are, as he is in the winner that he is, and the more you're seeing that next level get back to, to running the ball with Lamar Jackson is doing in Baltimore, uh, yes, he's got a home at the next level. Fifteen to twenty-one for two forty-two through the air today. Looking for more tight coverage. He'll toss it to the sideline. Another dangerous throw. Greg Eisworth with the coverage on C.D. Lamb, and it's third and ten. Well, I'll tell you what the Cyclones are doing. About as good a job as anybody I've seen against Oklahoma this year. <laughs> C.D. nearly comes down with this one. Is there's that, that first initial option that Jalen wants to get to, that Lincoln wants to get to? They're taking it away. I mean, the number of times he is coming off of his spot, and that is credit to some of the pattern reading, that is credit to some of that zone defense. There have not been nearly as many gimmies through that first progression tonight as you're used to seeing. Joel pressure again. They've brought it on third down lately. This is going to be a free play. Hurts try to make it, make him pay, and he does with a first down to Lamb. A lot of talking going on right now between Lamb and Greg Eisworth. Some of the other DBs for Iowa State. Defense. Penalties decline. Result of the play. First down. Second, third down pickup for this drive for the Sooners. And the first one was Jalen's legs running through it. This is CeeDee Lamb on a redshirt freshman. Just bailing, bailing, bailing. That is an easy pitch and catch with the comeback. And watch my guy Creed Humphrey. Watch the center here. He's just said enough. Wow. Enough with you blitzers. I'm going to toss you on the ground. Guy was a captain as a sophomore. Hurts. This time can't get away. Zach Peterson, who grew up dreaming of playing for Iowa State, like his dad Troy did in the early 90s, to come to Iowa State and then press into a more important role because of the injury to Jaquan Bailey. They've really been happy with the way that he's played. He's growing and a better job. High, but actually getting more cloth the Hurts, using some of the leverage the former wrestler. It's really almost two point takedown the QB. Second down 14. Brooks has room off the left side. Gets a couple of blocks from Lamb. Springing him free. Touchdown. Brooks with an assist from CD Lamb. Marquise Hayes in particular watched the left guard come right out and seal Marcel Spears. That set up all that green grass, and then you talked about it, C.D. Lamb. That's not one. That's two. That is the difference, man. That is why these guys have accomplished what they have year in and year out. Not just about receptions, man. That is incredible effort to knock two Cyclones out of the play. Big time. Extra point good from Gabe Burkich. What a shot we have right there. Lamb doing the little things. NFL dudes will love the athleticism and the playmaking, but more than anything, the selflessness for C.D. Lamb to make his buddies around him better. One of the most common questions asked all the time, and certainly when these guys get to the league, C.D. Lamb, do you love football? And every guy says, I love football, but then there's some that express it. And are willing to not just talk it, but show it right there. The two blocks to set up that touchdown run by Kennedy Brooks. He knows it. He knows that's going to look good on tape. And this is pretty good here. Look at Mike DeFia. No, no, that, that was good. Just enough now. Get back, get back to the sidelines to celebrate with your teammates. Yes, Mr. DeFia. <laughs> I won't argue with you, sir. Maybe one good. Crosses the 30. Real Mitchell here, Brock, into the game at quarterback with Purdy split out wide. And Mitchell, who is a really talented runner, able to get the corner. Extended run against West Virginia late in the game and flashed some really good things. Redshirt freshman from Eastville, California. You know what they can do with Real is really what Kansas State did a week ago. I mean, he's a capable thrower, but a tremendous runner. I won't be surprised if we see that again, maybe in a critical juncture. Got eight, put Purdy back there, second and two. Deshante Jones, one of the most productive receivers in the Big 12, held without a catch in the first half. He gets his first one of the night here 
to move the chains. Yeah, really not targeted much in that first half. As Turner Yell just yanks him out of bounds. A bunch of his catches have come that way. Just that, that feel, that little bubble route. To again, get on the edges. Get on the edges of this defense. That is where there has been the most yardage tonight for the Cyclones. Kanenuangu can really fly. He takes the fake on the motion. On a wheel, Hall is well covered by Deshaun White. But a flag flies. Hmm. What do you think? I think Hall ran himself right out of bounds. Right. <laughs> That's what I think. There was some contact, but ultimately you see Hall, well, he runs right into the boundary, and yes, there's a little bit of contact. <laughs> Defense. That's a tough one on White. Spot foul, first down. What's White top right there? White's top used the extra defender. Use that boundary. And if the running back's gonna give that and run right out of bounds, take him there. Yeah, White doesn't like that call. That may be one of the first real misses tonight. And a guy who Oklahoma's been really pleased with, that linebacker spot alongside Kenneth Murray, and that opportunity with Caleb Kelly's injury. Moves it all the way to the 41. First down and 10, Iowa State. Purdy like juggled it for a moment, and then got back to the line of scrimmage where Murray finished him off. Brock Purdy, 320 yards through the air per game this season. 11 of 17, just 153 so far today. He's not turned it over like he did three times in the fourth quarter against Oklahoma State. But he's also not produced the kind of numbers that folks around Iowa State are used to seeing. second and ten they fake it up the middle and toss it to chase allen the tight end is inside the 15 first down and a gain of 29. that's pretty cool play here by brock purdy i think he was listening to you oh really you don't you don't think i'm making big plays well watch this little quick like a second baseman right there right just turning the double play get it out of it got it out of my hands as quickly as possible a little pop pass for the explosive play so two of the three tight ends, big plays in this game. Still waiting for Kohler to get his. Jones is pulled down immediately by Parnell Motley. Senior out of Washington, D.C. Set an up-and-down career. Three-year starter. He was kind of a whipping boy for them as they were struggling each of the last few seasons. But having a nice senior campaign. And a big stop there makes it second and ten. Eventually, Kohler has got to show up. Attached to the left side of the formation here. A two tight end set. It's Purdy. Stumbling inside the 15 as Murray bared down on him. Third and long. Well, it's four down territory. Right, I mean, you're not going to kick field goals now. And if you got any chance to do what you did two years ago, and it's got to be seven here in this red zone. And I think the faithful in this building know it. Timeout, Iowa State. And the slot to the bottom of the screen on third and nine. Purdy steps up, tucks it, runs inside the 10. They spot him at the 7, and it's fourth down. Like you said, four down territory. There is a flag down. Kind of in an interesting location across the field. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 44. Half the distance to go, automatic first down. That is on Brendan Radley Hiles in a huge call. And the Oklahoma sophomore.
Yeah, it was just a cheap shot, right? It was just at the end of the play. I mean, it's just something that uh, away from the field. You know, we asked Alex Grinch yesterday about Brendan, and, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of room for him to grow more confidence and trust from the staff. And you can see the frustration right there. That, that just can't happen. Well, it's the one thing to not produce the way you're hoping that he does, but it's another thing to do counterproductive things like that. And that is how this third quarter comes to a close. It's a three-score game, but Iowa State threatening. Here in Norman, we've got the fourth coming up on Fox. Fourth quarter begins with first and goal for Iowa State after the unsportsmanlike penalty call on Radley Hiles. They fake it and toss over the top for a touchdown with Chase Allen. Right, you get the linebackers to bite. That's easy. Fifth consecutive Big 12 title. Trying to check into the box as they push. Let's climb to the college football playoff rankings. Trey Brown in the return. Keeps it alive momentarily. Moving in the drive with Brooks. Dropped in the backfield. A loss of five. There were all kinds of white shirts around him there. Lawrence White. I get credit for the tackle. And the injured player is Adrian Ely. There's another to the right tackle, Adrian Ely. Ely goes down. Watch Jamal Johnson, though. One, we've called his name three, four times. That penetration, and then it's Creed Humphrey and Marcel Spears that run right into the lower legs there of Ely. Eight tackles for loss by the Cyclones tonight. Eight for an Oklahoma crew that only gives up about four per game on the season. They move Eric Swenson over to right tackle. R.J. Proctor comes into the game, plays left tackle. Hurts out of a tight pocket to the sideline. Lamb gets away from Bates from Young. Loses the ball. Who's got it? Iowa State says they do. And with 14.26 left to go in this one, the Cyclones have it. 2 for Brock Purdy and Iowa State. Hall joins him in the backfield. Brees Hall under the short side. Downhill, crashing his way to the 25, and they continue to attack the edges of the defense. Yeah, th this defense, there's no question, misses John Michael Terry. Uh, he went out in the Kansas game, and you've seen from that Kansas game a real commitment to get to the edges, whether it's Nick Benito, whether it's Aguebu. We've talked about Radley Hiles, some of his struggles setting the edge as well. There is no question the Sooners miss some of that leadership and strength out on the perimeter. Now, Bruce let us know earlier that Nick Bonito is getting his leg looked on. He's not in there right now. It is Oguebu instead. A true freshman. And their third option at that rush in. Ball gets toppled this time by Radley Hiles. And that's how you make up for a couple mistakes today you play downhill he's a guy that's got to pull the trigger i mean he's an undersized guy and when he hesitates it's no good but when he can come downhill this is why he was a five-star recruit back in the day running right through the legs of Brees hall and open field tackles have shown to be a difficult thing against hall today good one there from the inglewood california native setting up third and two Tight end corner in motion. Still without a catch today. Purdy on a design quarterback run has a first down, but a flag down. And this is coming back. You just could see it, couldn't you? Yeah. That's going to be the center or the left guard down and trying to get out in front. Just get the tug of the corner, Motley. So often you see when that ball bounces outside, you just look for the tug. I think it was the left guard, the redshirt freshman, Trevor Downing, that just reaches out. There is no foul in the play. Wow. <laughs> and so the first down stands. Yeah, take a look at the left guard. Pulling around on number 11, the corner right here. You tell me <laughs> if, if he doesn't pull just a little bit right there. I think the judgment is going to be, you know, he was already outside. It didn't impede the tackle, but to me, that's called nine out of ten times, and the hometown fans are letting you know about it. They're getting a good look at it on that giant video board here at Memorial Stadium. First down at the 19. And now flag. I remember earlier. Ball start. Tackle, good 
Jones. Yeah, remember earlier these referees talked and Matt Campbell lost his mind on a pass interference call where the two guys got together and decided, nope. And I'm not saying in any way that's a makeup call. That's not the way it ever works. But look at the left side here, and you tell me whether or not there is a jersey pulled that affects Motley's ability to go get it. They got three tight ends on the field here. One of them lined up as a traditional tight end, the other one in motion, and then the third, a split end. Another flag, the ninth on Iowa State. Number 52. Most penalties in a game this season for a team that is fourth in the country in terms of not committing penalties. So from first and 10 at the 19 to first and 20, that's 29. Purdy couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Kenneth Murray. The man that finished him off, and it's second and long. Purdy trying to beat it. Flag down as Kohler gets his first catch of the night. A lot of contact there between he and the safety. We've seen this on a couple different occasions. Could go either side. Could go either way. Automatic first down. Holding. Defense number 10. And so Iowa State built out on a second and 20 penalty. Yeah, these two have been going at it now. Right? There's a third down earlier and a whole lot of contact. Kohler goes into him, but I think once you grab, as Pat Field did, then you reach your arms around the much bigger tight end. You're in danger drawing that holding call. So first down inside the 20 now. Iowa State was able to take advantage of a huge penalty on the previous drive, scored in the next play. Jones coming in motion. He's got it, and the high school quarterback looks to throw. Covered downfield, so he'll tuck it and get back to the line of scrimmage. It's the second play tonight where they've had Jones ready to throw it, and ill-advised heave hole in the first half. Here he thought better of it. Yeah, he learned his lesson. Yeah, that first one he got away with. That time, Oklahoma does just enough to cover Purdy. And I love the call. I love the aggressiveness. What you got to do? Especially against an active crew for Alex Grinch, who's lost their eyes at times defensively. And if you're Grinch, what do you trust right now? Four options to the wide side of the field on second and ten. A deep drop. Throwing to the sideline. It's Petway. But incomplete. Coverage from Parnell Motley. Third and ten. Ooh, and I think he had Kohler there for one of the first times. Kohler's getting held at the line of scrimmage, disrupted some of the timing. This is where Purdy has got to stand so strong and deliver. There's going to be guys reaching and grabbing. You've seen it all night long. And if you're Purdy, you've got to take a page out of the guy you're competing against on the other side on third down, and that's keep plays alive. No coordinator Tom Manning sends in this third and ten call. Keep the play alive. And only a three-man rush, so Purdy with time until Gallimore comes loose. The throw for quarters incomplete. The freshman Jaden Davis in coverage, and it's fourth and ten. They keep the offense out there, no question. 10-13 left to go in a two-touchdown game. And I know it was like 20 minutes ago, but this was off the takeaway, right? This was C.D. Lamb's fumble that you have got to, if you're Iowa State, make that takeaway pay. They are fourth 
for their last four on fourth down. Purdy with all day. Over the middle. That's caught for a first down by Jones. They are five for their last five on fourth down. It's first and goal for the Cyclones. And the... Brees Hall trying to bounce to the corner. Gets around Motley and is inside the five. It's not setting an edge. I mean, once again, every one of these defenses for Alex Grinch that he calls, no matter what it is, what the coverage is, every one of them's got containment. Every one of them, you have somebody that is there to set the edge. But time and again, just like two weeks ago, this ball is bouncing outside of containment. It was a second half adjustment. Get more to the perimeter. Play this game more on the perimeter, and it's paid serious dividends for Iowa State. 6-7 tight end Chase Salmon lined up behind the O-line. Purdy looks to run behind him. Into the arms of Laron Stokes who body slams him down and it's third and goal. Talk on the other side about just defeating blocks, right? But ultimately you got to defeat blocks. And that's a double team. That is big boy football. That is a double team that you don't quit. And instead you fight right through. And then as you said, man, WWE Raw, you got to get them down to the <laughs> ground. Third and goal for Iowa State. Option play. Purdy. Dangerous throw! Hall's got it, but he's driven out close to the 20 by Radley Hiles. It's fourth and goal from what it will officially be the 14-yard line. Well, we talk about that edge. They ran speed option earlier. There was nobody, remember? Nobody. Well, not this time. Number one, Neville Glott. Gallimore breaks through that line, and that is dangerous. And a no-no by Brock Purdy that he gets away with some way, somehow. But that's the kind of pursuit from Radley Hiles this defense has been begging for. Isn't it also just life for Oklahoma that they couldn't even get a takeaway on that play? It's now been four, almost five games without a takeaway for Oklahoma. Fourth down and goal here. They would settle for a turnover on downs to be certain. given time. He is in trouble to the end zone. Incomplete. And they do turn it over on downs with 7.37 left. To Oklahoma with a two-score lead. Back on offense after this break the field and unfortunately just the first missed lead costly for the Cyclones Kennedy Brooks on first down but with a flag down but Joe it is hard man when your clock all game is extend extend right you're running around you play maker but there you just have to have the discipline to just read it inside out if that first read is there and man it was middle of the field open personal pull the trigger face mask defense number 55 the 15 yard penalty would be added to the end of the run it's on Zach Peterson. That is a season-high 10 penalties on Iowa State. Yep. Goes it to the 34. Two timeouts left for the Cyclones. 7-18 and counting. And another flat. This one to be on Oklahoma. You get a flag, and you get a flag. <laughs> Taking turns here. False start. Offense, number eight. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. And I think you know what Matt Campbell is going to say post-game. Right, he said it at halftime, and, man, they have fought and they have scratched. But when you just commit these kind of penalties, you expect a true freshman like Bridges to possibly make that mistake. There have been too many veterans on the Iowa State side that have just committed way too many uncharacteristic penalties. Penalties, and then you look back at the missed opportunities defensively in the first half. Brooks. For the 
turn nothing into a little something, but it's inside seven minutes as Marcel Spears takes the tackle. Remember, it was 35 points for Oklahoma in that first half. I mean, Iowa State gets a takeaway. Iowa State gets some stops. Iowa State defensively has played a well of the second half. Really made it much more difficult on Jalen timing-wise, but much more aggressive on that side and not near the production we've been used to seeing. Purchase three of seven passing in the second half. Give it all day here. Checks it down to Brooks. Thrown out of bounds by Lawrence White. Third and 12 in a spot here with 6.07 left where Iowa State's got to get off the field now. Third down six for CeeDee Lamb to the bottom of the screen, defended by Anthony Johnson. On that play clock way down before snapping it. First to throw against a three-man rush. Given time, now takes off. Won't get it as he's driven down by Mike Rose. Now you're right, some effort by this Iowa State defense since halftime. And that is a big-time tackle against this guy in space. But a sophomore from Brexville, Ohio, who was a freshman All-American last year and has had another good year here as a sophomore. I mean, you've got a close space. You've got a wrap. You've got a claw. Look at him. Both hands just to secure a tackle against Jalen Hurts in the open field like that is all hands on deck. You make instructional videos off of that stuff this day and age of football. Inside the five minute mark. It's a line drive, and so a chance for Milton. Trey Brown does well to stick with him. 442 left to go. Iowa State back on offense. No room for air left for the Cyclones. Brock Purdy, 193 yards and three touchdowns through the air. Works off play action on first down. He's on the roll. He lost one for Milton, who is able to bring it in near the 40. Wow. Tariq Milton with a juggling reception at 28 yards, spotted at the 47. And this is right into double coverage. I mean, these are the kind of plays you got to make with five minutes left, but look at the coverage. I mean, you can't cover it any better. Now go take the ball. And the Sooners just not capable of doing so defensively. They run Hall. There's a block from Allen. And go to the bounds, crossing into Oklahoma territory. I mean, the former safety Grinch, Alex Grinch, defense coordinator now, former safety way back when. I mean, that, that's the call you want. I mean, you got two Sooners right there, and that's what he talks about so much is learning to take it away, to not just put yourself in position and not just run the coverage, but then you've got to execute at the end and take the ball away. Going on five games without one. Second down, five. Four minutes left to go as Purdy retreats with his eyes downfield. Steps up in the pocket. He'll take off. He makes a man miss inside the 40 and out of bounds at the 33. That's a scramble of 15 yards for Brock Purdy. And by the way, if you don't do it, then you just empower quarterbacks like Brock to throw it to give your guys a chance. And then Purdy really does his best. Jalen Hurts. Allow everything to develop down the field. He's run for 100 yards. And if you empower him to do that, that's when he's at his best, when he can be a gunslinger. As you see, Ram. First down from the Oklahoma 33. Stands tall. Delivers to a wide open man. It's a touchdown. The local guy. Seven. 3.35 left to go still. So Matt Campbell very well kick it deep if he chooses. Oklahoma will put the hands team out there just in case. The only man deep is Rambo. Over his head for a touchback. Had his career as a starter. 26 and 2 at Alabama, then transferred over here to Oklahoma. Hands it off on first down. That is the first carry of the day for T.J. Pledger. Well, interesting time to give him his first touch. 
Second down and eight or nine. You just feel Iowa State playing downhill and thinking, right, I mean, these linemen, that's Orion Vance, and he needs Swenson in the hole. These guys are setting the tone at the line of scrimmage in the second half. Isn't it a weird, eerie feeling in here? Oklahoma led this game by three touchdowns. Three minutes down to seven. Rambo coming in motion. Here's Brooks. Put both hands over that ball. And very conservatively leaning forward for a couple of yards into the arms of Eni Uazarike. A timeout for Iowa State. They've got third down and seven. Iowa State could not get off of the field on third down in the first half. They figured it out here in the second. Can they do it one more time? Hurts looking to throw on third and seven. He's retreating with Spears chasing him, and he throws an interception. Lawrence White picks it off. And with 2.43 left to go, Iowa State's got it in Oklahoma territory. Would you believe this? Yes, because I've watched it this entire second half. The adjustments and the response from Iowa State playing hard. And ultimately, Hurts cuts down half the field with this scramble. Runs out of real estate, runs out of room. And those three of them in the first half, they went off the hands of Iowa State but not this time. They spotted at the 35-yard line. 2.43 and a timeout left. The Cyclones trailed this game by three touchdowns on multiple occasions. Purdy facing pressure. He steps up into the arms of Gattamore for a short game. A ball came out for a moment there. Gattamore ripping at it. Purdy hangs on to it. Second down and eight. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we are right here. And Oklahoma better find a way to cover and win their one-on-one -on -one battles and coverage. Movement up front. That has been one of the biggest issues tonight for Iowa State. Start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And that is some of the movement now Oklahoma does pre-snap. There is no question about it. And Iowa State's been able to overcome so many of these self-inflicted mistakes. But I'm telling you, there is going to be in the final 207 here one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And Matt Campbell knows it against a depleted secondary that's been beat up. Is Purdy going to have a chance to stand and deliver will be the biggest key. Product of Perry High School in Arizona. Back to throw on second down. That's tipped and incomplete. Looking for the crosser Jones. Third and 13. I think it was Gallimore that gets his big pause up. Does not get home on the rush. You can see the eyes in just perfect timing because this was catch and run. That's an underneath shallow cross. It more than likely was a first down if the senior doesn't have the feel to knock the ball away. scrambles he'll tuck it makes a move he's gonna get a first down Brock Purdy making moves in the open field for 16. I mean that is straight number one stuff on the other side this is Pat Fields in a one-on-one -on -one, and Jalen Hurts makes this move all season long and Pat Fields has nothing to grasp but air now Purdy hands it off he's Hall can't get away from Ronnie Perkins throws him down for a loss a minute 20 and counting. Some tired boys on that defense right now. Puffing and puffing, gasping for air. Injury riddled unit. They snap it with a minute left. Pretty given time. Delivers sideline. He's got Kohler for his first catch of the day. And Iowa State has it first and goal. 
I've been wondering when he was going to show up, but he does here in a big spot for a gain of 16. Lots and lots of hand fighting. Drew a third down coverage penalty, but ultimately used that big six foot six frame and makes the biggest, most critical play yet. 39 seconds. He drops the snap and gets back on top of it, but it will force Iowa State to burn its final timeout. Yeah, and Purdy just was not ready. I think he's trying to communicate some protection, and you're going to see he's not even looking for the snap. He's looking to the side to see if they can signal as the ball drills him in the lap. On second and goal from the 13. Retreating, throwing, incomplete, looking for Petway, and it's third and goal with 31 seconds. They tried to run that post route that they had on fourth down, a very similar scheme. And that time, Lincoln Riley Sooners were ready to cut off that post route before it could get started. Got to protect. You've got to just, you know, if you're back it, just protect. Just give me an opportunity. Because I think they feel good about many of these matchups. They pack four options into the near side of the field. On third and goal, Purdy lofting, end zone, Kohler, touchdown! To look for here for the lead and perhaps the win. With 24 seconds left to go, Matt Campbell rolling the dice. Iowa State going for two against ninth-ranked Oklahoma. take the ball away <laughs> they could not take the ball away no matter what the different circumstances were they couldn't do it until there were 20 seconds left on the clock clock was there a lot of contact yes yeah there was are they going to let them play in that moment i think you have to campbell thinks it's going his way he thinks pitway's secure back on to no to take very seriously two kickers are out there Braden narvison along with it's narvison to drill it a whistle and a timeout was taken before Oklahoma took it. Prior to the kick, Oklahoma takes their first time out of the half. 30-second timeout. Him being the perfectionist that he is, it's going to crush him looking back on film. Now hoping for one last gasp. If they can get it with an onside, that's hit hard to the wrong guy. C.D. Lamb's got it. And Oklahoma will move to 8-1 and one despite this incredible charge from Iowa State. Here in the fourth quarter. Wow. To be. But they got to get better on that defensive side of the ball. And you know what? Credit Iowa State. They took them out of rhythm in that second half offensively. You love the win if you're Lincoln Riley. You win in advance. That's what championship November is all about. But there's an awful lot to clean up for those Sooners. And to play avoid, the complimentary ball you need to play. Avoid back-to-back -back losses again. It's been 20 years since they've suffered back-to-back -back regular season defeats. Arnold Motley getting the interception on the game-deciding two-point conversion attempt from Iowa State. Bruce Feldman with Lincoln Riley. So, Lincoln, as they're moving down the field, you have this big lead. All of a sudden, now you got DBs getting banged up, cramping up. They're moving in. What's going through your mind as they're lining up for that two-point play? Well, I had confidence that we would stop it, uh, but you got to be ready to play. I mean, they're, they're a really good football team. We knew that coming in. Uh, we had some opportunities to put the game away, didn't do it, and we let you know let a really good football team stay in the game and made it made it tough there at the end. 
Your defensive coordinator, Alex Grinch, was telling us about, hey, we could be better, but if we don't respond to adversity, it doesn't matter. What did you learn about your team today? And we responded some there, certainly at the end. We had some big stops, certainly throughout the game. We're not happy with how we finished, uh, you know, there, letting that game get, you know, a lot closer in our minds than it should have been. But it's November. You got to just try to find ways to win, and we did it today. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. All right, Bruce, and yeah, that is now 18 consecutive November wins for Oklahoma back to 2014. Around here, they call it championship November. Jalen Hurts posing for pictures. Huge first half, quiet second half, but put it all together, and it's enough to get Oklahoma to 8-1. 42-41, the final score. Back with more post-game coverage after these messages.